worldwide, 513 million pupils were enrolled in secondary education in 2005, an increase of 17% over 1999. The world average for the proportion of children enrolled in secondary schools is 59%. The Pacific holds the higher figure, 66%, but some regions are significantly lower. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we have only 26%, the Caribbean 42% and South and West Asia 46%. The introduction of free primary education has created a surge in the secondary intake in some countries, but with a low survival rate. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the secondary survival rate is 63% compared to 89% worldwide. Survival rates are particularly low in Malawi, Uganda and Mozambique, where fewer than half of the pupils reach the last grade. Given this scenario, it is evident that there is an urgent need to expand quality secondary education. The Commonwealth of Learning has developed models for applying technology to learning for development. One such model is the open schools. In a study commissioned by the Commonwealth of Learning, Cowell and Rumble concluded it will be difficult, if not impossible, to meet the demand for secondary education on the scale envisaged without resorting to open schooling. We define open schooling as the physical separation of the school level learner from the teacher and the use of unconventional teaching methodologies and information and communication technologies to bridge the separation and provide the education and training. Over the next three years, the Commonwealth of Learning's Open Schools Initiative will work with policymakers, management, open school practitioners responsible for secondary education to equip governments to cope with the increased demand for secondary schooling. This will be achieved through the following. Firstly, we will focus on research and development of working models of open schooling. Secondly, advocacy in open schooling is a viable option for, sec for secondary schooling. Using a, vi a wide range of resources we have developed over the past two years. The latest is the Open Schooling for the 21st Century, which was published in April this year. Professional development of practitioners and policy makers in open schools. Here we want to foster a common understanding of open schooling its different dimensions, the challenges that we are facing all over the Commonwealth. And for this reason, we will use our own resources that we have developed in collaboration with all our different partners. If I can mention a few, we have the Open Schools Handbook, a resource guide for management. We have the cost and financing um, in open schooling. Call has also its own instructional design template, which we have now uh, developed into different platforms and using uh, also widely all over the Commonwealth. The instructional design uh, guide, in-house study gu guide for practitioners, and also the learner support guides. All of these guides we have developed in collaboration with our partners, and we would really like to use this to foster that common understanding and to ensure that we are all working towards the same standard of quality. Then we will also focus more on technical and vocational courses, we will use the use of technologies, especially mobile devices, as teaching and learning tools, and we will develop and disseminate open education resources for secondary education. Here, we have started with this initiative late last year, where we are developing open education resources in six countries with the assistance and support of the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. We will work with governments and institutions in the Pacific, Caribbean, Africa and Asia in meeting this challenge of expanding access to quality education. A key strategy will be partnerships with organizations that have similar values and share the same vision for open schooling with a focus on South-South collaboration.